Right now at 6 o'clock, a woman is dead after a car crash involving a police cruiser. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin is standing by in Vernon with an update. And what's being done to help kids at a high school in Hartford to cope with the loss of their beloved coach, where the investigation into his death stands this morning. And man, are UConn fans excited, nervous energy ahead of tonight's championship game. We'll tell you what they had to say about Saturday night's Final Four win. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good Monday. Ha good morning. Happy <laughs> Monday. Thanks for being with us. Hopefully you had a great weekend. I'm Erica Arias. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good Monday works. Let's have a good Monday. Uh, let's get over to meteorologist Matt Scott to see if the weather's going to cooperate on that front, right? It's going to be a great Monday. Good. If everything goes as planned, weather-wise, sports-wise, yep. everything in the middle-wise. All right. Um, we're wearing our blue. <laughs> we all have a little Sporting blue on. Our blue. Yeah, absolutely. Good morning to you. Nice to have you along. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, we are starting out with a chilled start. Temperatures on the low side this morning, but with a Sunshine will warm us up. Mild conditions uh, prevailing throughout much of the week. Going we'll to talk about a midweek system coming through. That's coming up in a little bit. Look at these numbers. Ooh, 25 in Meriden, Torrington. Uh, a little better on the shoreline in the upper 20s. 29 is not bad in uh, Hartford, but 24 in Wilmanic. We've got clear skies out there. Mostly clear for the most part. Beautiful, almost not quite a full moon out there. Uh, bigger picture showing you uh, really nothing to be concerned with today. Flow is going to start to turn around. That's going to moderate the temperatures a little bit. Bus stop forecast as we wait for the sun to officially come up this hour for the high schoolers. 28 degrees now will practically double it uh, by the time the students get off the bus later on this afternoon. And nothing to worry about for after school activities today aside from those breezes. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what's in store for the work week. Come on back for that in a few minutes right now for the first time. We get to say good morning morning or I get to say good morning for the first time. Excuse me. So you've already been here for an hour. <laughs> 602. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> good morning to you, Matt Scott. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you're all having a good day so far. We do still have a closure. Some breaking news out on the roadways that we're following. This is down in the New Haven area. I-95 northbound right at that Pearl Harbor Memorial Bridge between exits 48 and 50 is still close at this time due to a severe crash involving a tractor trailer and another car. We do have video from the scene from from uh, someone that was actually in the backup, the tractor trailer ended up catching on fire. Drake Burgett provided this video to Fox 61. I-95 northbound has been closed since after 8 o'clock last night. So this has been a very extensive closure, and it's not just involving I-95. We also have new in New Haven Route 34. Eastbound is closed, which is the off-ramp to I-95. It's still shut down. And also I-91 southbound, the exit to I-95 northbound is closed. So be mindful of this if you are heading out the door. They have turned the camera, but we see no traffic moving on the northbound side. They are hoping to get one lane open in the next half hour or so, but your best bet is going to be to take exit 46 and use route one. Route one is going to be your best detour if you do have to typically travel this way because unfortunately it has just been quite a closure. We also have a stalled vehicle over in Madison on I-95 northbound. This is right between, right at exit 61 and we know that that is having the left lane closed. So a lot going on on the roadways. I would like to end with a good note that 91, 84 and route two in and out of the capital city are all looking good. Tim and Erica, back over to you. Lauren, thank you. Yeah, 603. Vernon police said one woman is dead and a man and child are hurt after a Vernon police officer crashed into a car while responding to a different call. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin is live in Vernon this morning with more on how what police say happened. Brooke, good morning. Uh, good morning to you both. Vernon police say that officer was on his way to provide backup at another scene whenever he went through an intersection and then crashed into another car. There is extreme damage done to both of those cars. Vernon police say that this crash happened just past six o'clock last night at the intersection of the Hartford Turnpike and Bolton Road. They tell us the officer was called to assist other officers who needed help while responding to a protective order violation that ultimately ended in 
in an arrest. Police say the officer was in emergency mode, which means he likely had on lights and sirens when he went through the intersection and hit a white sedan. Officers tell us there was a man, woman and a child in that car. They say the woman in her 30s died from her injuries and the man and child are in the hospital recovering. We do not know the relationship of those three people at this time. Police say the officer is shaken up and does have injuries of his own, but he is expected to be OK. There is not currently any word on whether or not the officer is suspended while that investigation takes place. Now, the intersection, of course, is now back open at this time. It was shut down for several hours while they conducted that investigation. But police say they're not quite done investigating this yet. If you happen to see anything, maybe even saw that crash happen, they want you to give them a call so they can piece together exactly what took place. Live in Vernon, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Now, Brooke, thank you for that report. Now, 6.05 this Monday morning, a school community continues to grieve the loss of a beloved basketball coach. 56-year-old Kendall May was killed on Friday in a hit and run. Well, this morning, Prince Tech High in Hartford is opening on a two-hour delay to allow students to talk to crisis team members about the death. Fox 61's Angelo Bavaro joins us live outside Prince Tech with more on where that investigation into his death stands this morning. Hey, good morning, Tim. Just an all around tragedy with this case. Now, as of that last update from Hartford Police that we got this weekend, they are still looking for that car, that vehicle that hit May and then fled the scene. As that work happens, those who knew May are remembering a man who they say touched thousands of lives, student lives here at the high school over 30 years during his work as a coach as well as an educational assistant. Now that crash, that hit and run, that happened this past Friday on Main Street. Police responding to that scene around 6.30 p.m. on a report of a pedestrian hit. May was found unresponsive in the street and was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. According to police, the car that fled the scene is a gray Jeep Cherokee with Vermont plates. Coach May, as he was affectionately called, was well known throughout the state for the basketball program that he built at Prince Tech as the boys head coach, which has been league champs and made the state playoffs. In a statement, Prince Tech principal Daniel Mello also remembering another side of May, the side that, quote, made his student athletes go for extra help with math rather than attend practice or the side that provided Saturday morning breakfast for his athletes. Other people who knew May also remembering the coach as a man defined by character. He was more of a mentor and to a lot of us, he was like an uncle and a father to a lot of us. If you need anything, and he, you go to him and he'll help you out any way they can. And again, Prince Tech opening on that two hour delay for students to get that crisis team in place. We have reached out to Hartford Police for an update on the search for that SUV this morning. Still waiting to hear back on that front. We are live in the capital city this morning. I'm Angelo Bavaro, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Angelo, thank you. Well, happening today, a Wendy's manager accused of yelling racial slurs at a high school basketball team is due in a Danielson courtroom. 22-year-old Brett White of Canterbury is facing several charges, including a hate crime. And police say back in February, White used racial slurs to ref and refused to serve the Woodstock Academy basketball team at the Plainfield Wendy's. Today, the NAACP is holding a press conference in Danielson, and they're demanding the state's attorney's office not negotiate a lesser charge and maintain the hate crime charges against White. And also due in court, Paul and Susanna Leifer from Shelton. They're accused of hosting a party and allowing minors to drink alcohol there. Police say that's the same party where a fight broke out and resulted in the stabbing death of James McGrath in May of last year. Authorities arrested 17-year-old Raul Valley in connection to McGrath's death and charged him with murder. World Wrestling Entertainment, or WWE, might soon be under new ownership. Fox Business is reporting a potential multi-billion dollar deal that would merge Vince McMahon's uh, company with Endeavor's Ultimate Fighting Championship, or UFC. Endeavor shareholders would have 51% of the company. WWE shareholders would have the other 49%. The deal would have the two companies form a separate publicly traded entity.
now to UConn men's basketball. Of course, we're Spartan our blue. Are you? Let us know. We're talking about the countdown. It is on for the championship game. Yeah, tonight the Huskies are just 40 minutes away from UConn's fifth national championship in 25 seasons. If they can beat the five seed San Diego State tonight. Um, it's been a long road for the Huskies, especially after a disappointing finish in the Big East Conference Tournament when they lost to Marquette. But boy, did they turn it around in the big dance easily looking like the best team in the tournament. They're winning by an average of 20 points a game. But of course, nothing is guaranteed. So what do they need to do to beat the Aztecs tonight? We just got to execute our plays and play how we've been playing. I mean, I feel like, you know, we've been playing at a dominant level, so like we just got to continue doing that. But we just got to rebound the ball, and make sure we execute plays and don't no loose ball turnovers. And several other players said they need to be aggressive and guard the ball. Now back here at home, UConn fans and stores are gearing up for the big win. A lot of people are going to be gathering for a watch party inside Campbell, and many are hoping that they're going to have a big reason to celebrate at the end of the game. It's going to be, I feel like it's going to be an easy game for them. Um, the other team can't compete with us. I say UConn, you say Huskies. UConn, Huskies, UConn, Huskies. Now a lot of students told us that they worked to get ahead in their schoolwork so that they could just focus on the game tonight. And Fox 61 has live team coverage for you into UConn's run for a fifth national title. Sports director Jonah Karp is there in Houston covering all of tonight's action. You can also follow the Huskies on Fox61.com, the free Fox 61 news app, and on Fox 61 Plus if you have Roku or Amazon Fire TV.